name is Hercule Poirot. I'm a detective in a book titled Murder on the Orient Express by a famous author named Agatha Christie. In this book, this book takes place on a train called the Orient Express. In this book, danger is heading straight for Mr. Ratchet, a rich businessman to whom is more benevolent than Mailboy. During this book, a shocking death occurred. Mr. Ratchet is murdered. Having a little persuasion by my friend, the director of the train, Mr. Bose, I decided to crack the case. The victim was stabbed 12 times. There were 12 passengers on the train. Coincidence or not? I, of course, interview interviewed each of the passengers, but none acted in a way that would lead me to suspicion. The only valid clue I had was that the killer could not escape, but during the night, while passing through Yugoslavia, the, plane, the train had been trapped in deep snow. This was a very baffling case until my ingenious mind came to a solution. Mr. Ratchet had been involved in a horrible crime back in America, a kidnapping murder crime. Each one of the passengers on the train had something to do with the family's child that had been murdered. To get back at him, each one of them, during the night, crawled through each of the berths into Mr. Ratchet's room and stabbed him once. When, after I brought forth my conclusion and they agreed that I was right, but I didn't tell the Yugoslavian police that had really done it, for I believed that Ratchet had deserved his punishment. So instead, I told the Yugoslavian police that, Ra uh, that an outsider had come in onto the train, stabbed Ratchet a number of times, and gotten off the train before the train, before the train had been trapped in the snow, because they had found the window open that, mo that very morning. The police bought it. Tracy and Stacy are twins. One Tracy and Stacy are twins. One day they bought a mirror. Stacy, then one day Stacy got pulled into the mirror. Now Tracy had to pretend to be Stacy and herself because she didn't think anyone would believe that her sister got pulled into the mirror. Then one day Stacy found out how the mirror worked and told Tracy to the mirror. At the new moon on at 8:30. Tracy said she would call her sister back, and she did. Hi, my story is about the, uh, well, a stolen watch and was set, setting this on a boat. One day, I got my watch got stolen when I was asleep. When the crook stole my watch, he ran out and he dropped the watch. I took the watch and he gave me an identical watch. And so I, I grabbed the watch and I gave it to someone else to see what time it was. He took the watch and I never got it back. I asked him for it back, the, the rare watch, and he gave it to me back and I, I arrested the crook. My book is Hardy Boys Case File Number 11 Brother Against Brother. The, the author of my book is Frank W. Dixon. And the, play, the main characters in my book are Frank, Joe, Rita, and Rita's father. The, ca the, uh, the place where it took place in the Rocky Mountains. The, pro the problem was that someone killed Rhea's father and tried to kill Joe. At the, at the, and Frank, Joe had lost his memory and Frank came to the Rocky Mountains. Frank and Joe, Joe caught the um, hitman, caught the hitman. The author of my book is Sir Arthur Conan Doyle's, and he wrote The Adventure of the Regate Puzzle. <coughs> this story is about a burglary and the killing of a man named William Kerwin. You see, Watson came to visit Holmes in France, and while they were there, Watson took Holmes to Surrey, England, to visit an old friend. Well, there had been an alarm going on, and a man named William Kerwin was killed. <coughs> Holmes was on the case at once, and with only one clue, a torn piece of paper reading, at 12 o'clock, learn what may be. 
They found this on William's body. Then they went to Mr. Cunningham's house because William was their coachman. Mr. Cunningham had a son named Alec, and Holmes and Watson were given a tour of the house. <coughs> when Holmes was in a hall, he knocked over a table intentionally so that he could explore two rooms that were unseen. Then, all of a sudden, there were screams, and Holmes was getting strangled by Alec Cunningham, and Mr. Cunningham had a revolver. <coughs> Obviously, Alec and Mr. Cunningham were guilty, and Holmes told everybody how he figured it out. He said there were two very important clues, and they were, number one, Alec said that the burglar shot William and ran away instantly, so there would be no time to, re to tear the note that they found. Number two, <coughs> Holmes also said that you could tell someone's age by the darkness of their writing. In this case, the note was written by a younger and an and a older person. He also said that the note was written by two different people, but he could prove that they were relatives because of the way they made their letters. Now that's elementary. Hello, I just read a great book called Healer by Peter Dickinson. It is about a 10-year-old girl named Pinky who can heal, who has remarkable healing powers and can heal anything from headaches to cancer. And a boy named Barry who has a split personality, he calls Bear because it is so violent. There is a man named, there is a man named Mr. Freeman who sees Pinky and uses her to make money by healing others. Barry wants to save Pinky and goes through a dog fight, a life-threatening escape, and a two-day bicycle expedition. In the end, Mr. Freeman dies, Pinky moves to America, and Barry doesn't lose Bear, but he looks at life in a new positive way. This was a very exciting and suspenseful book. My book is The Mummy Along the Crypt. The author is John Belias, and the characters are Johnny, Professor, and Mr. Gummis. The setting takes place at Mr. Gummis' estate in, our, in our around there, and the problem is that Mr. Gummis dies and only loses Will hidden in his house somewhere. The solution is Johnny puts all the missing clues together and figures out where the Will is. Nancy's Mysterious Letter by Carolyn King. Nancy Drew receives a letter by mistake about heirlooms. It was meant for a Nancy Smith Drew. While she's trying to find this girl, Nancy believes that a dangerous man named Edgar Nixon is trying to is trying to stop her from finding Nancy Smith Drew. As she finds out more about the mystery, she starts believing that Edgar Nixon plans to marry Nancy Smith Drew and steal the heirlooms. Nancy Drew disguises herself and finds Edgar Nixon in an airport. He is arrested by a plainclothesman and taken into an office where both of the Nancy Drews and the police were. He was then questioned and he confessed to everything he had done. Nancy Smith Drew is very unhappy because she was going she was going to go to England with him to be married. Nancy Drew dis suggested to her to take one of the tickets and go to England herself. The story I read is about a girl named Nancy Drew. She loves to solve mysteries and her father is a lawyer. One day she saw her little girl playing outside. Being startled by a big moving van that was in front of Nancy's car, the little girl fell over a bridge. Nancy jumped out of her car and went to help her. The little girl's name was Judy. Talking to Judy's aunts, Nancy learned that they couldn't give Judy the best of care because they had very little money. Then she learned that a man named Joseph Crowley promised them a big fortune of his will. 
But when he died, these other people got all of his money. Nancy was upset, and so were all the other people that were promised money. So Nancy went to all the Crowley relatives as possible and picked up many clues. Putting the clues together carefully, she found a later will. So the people that were promised money got it, and Judy got the best of care thanks to Nancy. Hello, I am Detective Christopher Turfrey from the County Department of Middlesex. I read the book Mac Football Fugitive by Matt Christopher. It was about a boy named Larry who exchanged letters with a football star named Yancey Foote, his role model. And later, Yancey's letters stopped coming. And I can't remember. Oh, yeah. And then he. And then at one of Larry's football games, and oh yeah, I forget my can I my I forget my thing. Oh yeah. oh yeah. And then Larry solved the case, figuring out that his football star Yancey Foote was in big trouble. And at one of Larry's football games, he noticed a stranger in the bleachers, and and followed him home because he knew it was Yancey. Yancey knew he was following him, so we gave him some football plays, and Larry's team became the best team. Hi. The story I read is called Horse Nap. The author is Bonnie Bryant. It all started when Carol, Lisa, and Stevie were watching a horse show. They were noticing that their favorite horses had dropped out. They wondered why, so they went to the back stables and didn't find them. When they were in the stables, they, they noticed a, note, a ransom note that asked for $10,000 if they wanted their horse back. Another clue was that they found the same kind of gum everywhere they tried to look for a clue. So that gum led them to an abandoned barn in the woods. Carol, Lisa, and Stevie were right, and they got the horse snappers arrested. Hi, this book is called A Crying at Night by Carol Ellis. It's about a family that goes on a summer vacation to a restored colonial village, where actors dress up as people in the colonial days. The main character in this story is Molly Bishop, and she can't wait to get there. Molly's mother just died a year ago, and her father recently married. One night, when Molly was in bed, she was awakened by a voice calling, Mother, Mother, what shall I do without you? Every night, Molly is awakened by this voice. She is scared, but mostly curious. Then Molly finds out some information on the house and discovers that a girl named Rebecca Woolrich lived there, there in 1692. Rebecca's mother was hanged by the village people because they thought she was a witch. Molly also finds out that Rebecca's voice must be the ghostly voice she has been hearing. Re Rebecca's voice is also, Rebecca is also crying because they are tearing down the house she lived in and to make a hotel. At the end of this book, Molly talks to the village people and convinces them to forget about tearing down the house. So Rebecca doesn't cry out anymore and she can rest in peace. Are you looking for a good book? Well, I just read one, if you are. It's called The Mysterious Man by Carolyn Keene. It is about this man named Farrak Tasmat that sends Nancy to his father, Nancy is a detective, an oriental rug from his temple, Turkey. There is a secret message hidden on the border of the, of the rug. It, it reads, find mannequin. Nancy is sure that there must be another message hidden in, so she stays up late and searches. In the parlor, Nancy hears a prowler, and the prowler try, tries to take Nancy's rug, but Nancy's dog Togo, Togo bites him on the arm. This story leads Nancy to warn her friends to meet new friends and enemies, 
in going to Istanbul, Ist Istanbul, believe it or not. On a scale of 1 to 10, I give this book a 13, and I recommend it to anyone. My book is called Midnight in the Dollhouse by Marge Philly, by Marge Philly. There was a girl named Greta who was packing up some dolls that she, that she loved. She, she was moving far away and had to give them all away. It, they went to a toy store in Boston. She didn't know where they went when, after a while, she wanted them back. There was a girl there was a girl named Melissa who had broken her arm and her leg. Which her which her mother by by which falling off a tree. And her mother had bought her a bunch of dolls. And the doll that she picked out was the little man that Greta had given away. But she named the doll Sir Gregory after her great great grandma. was called Highway Robert by Fa Franklin W. Dixon. In this book, the characters are Joe and Frank Hardy. They um, try to solve the mystery of a hijacking ring, and at the end, they find out that the criminals were a man named Officer McReady, Lou Gerard, and four thugs. At the end, they capture the thugs and save a company. The end. My book is called The Clue of the Leaning Chimney by Caroline Key. An old jade elephant was stolen from a Chinese store owned by Dick Milton. The vase was worth over $2,000. The vase was owned by Mr. Song. The characters are Nancy Drew, Bess George, the professor, the police, Mr. Drew, Ng Lei, Ng Moy, and Mr. Drew. Mr. Song and Dick Milton, Hannah Burrow. The solution was they went to the vault where the, where the base was hidden. Nancy said she had come with help. They opened the vault, got the base, and Carl was arrested. Carl was the thief. My book was called The Case of the Horrible Swamp Monster. One day, Annie, Angela, Bill, Huntley, Raymond, and Verna went to Lost Swamp to videotape for their project. On their way, they saw monster footprints. They got scared, but they still videotaped their project. And then they went home. The next day, they came back, and they made a trap so they could catch the monster. While they were waiting and waiting, they saw a scuba diver and they figured out that it was the flippers of the scuba diver. Hi, I just read this book, The Strange Intruder, by author Catherall. It was about a, a private eye named Asco that found a guy that was trying to, trying to sneak up and steal some jewelry, but at the end of this book, he, he caught him and killed him. This book was about the Hardy Boys who were trying to find out who robbed the tower mansion. Their friend's father, their friend Slim's father, was being accused of it because he was the caretaker of the tower mansion. Police don't have enough evidence to arrest him, so the Hardy Boys have to find out the real crook, or, Slim's or Slim will have to drop out of school because his father won't be able to get a job. They tracked down the real crook, and while they were chasing him, he got into a train accident and died. But just before he died, they were able to get him to confess that he did the robbery.